this week's best MMA bets. We're talking UFC Vegas 55 home versus Vieira. We're going to go through the locks, dogs, props, and the parlays. Make sure you guys smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and share the video as well. And we will jump into the lock section to start things off. Pretty entertaining card, I believe, coming up this weekend. I think we're going to get some solid fights. Now, lock number one for this card. I have to do it. It's going to be Holly Holm, the main event fighter. I think Holly is going to win against Ketlin Vieira. I feel like she's superior everywhere. Now, as far as the line, minus 233 is the best value you can find Holm at, uh, but she's around the minus 250 range. Ketlin Vieira plus 211 as the dog. I think Holly Holm should win this fight on the scorecards after fairly dominant performance striking i think she's vastly superior on the ground she's better Vieira's a strong girl and definitely does have power so it's not an absolute walkthrough but i see home outpointing her for the full five over four and a half is minus 220 so the value really isn't great but i do expect it to go long here now holly home to win a decision isn't looking like a juicy prop at minus 105. I don't really love the prop side of this fight too much here. You can't get a ton of value. If you went for the over three and a half, maybe at minus 290, if your book has it, I don't think it's terrible. I think it's most likely going the full five, but minus 220 value on an over four and a half. We got a lot of rounds to go through. It's cage fighting. Like at the end of the day, finishes can't happen, but it should go long. Home money line, not a terrible play. Home parlay piece, definitely something to consider. We'll talk parlays at the end, uh, and you'll definitely see a Holly Home in some of them. But yeah, first lock, it's going to be Holly Holm. Lock number two, Chidi Enja Kowani over Dushko Todorovic. Enja Kowani around the minus 214 favorite at best value. Dushko upwards of plus 198. I like the cheaty side. I think that he's vastly superior to Dushko Todorovic, and I actually expect him to knock him out. Under two and a half rounds, minus 150. I think that we're going to get this fight done in the first two. I think Enjo Kawani is actually going to do it with his hands and knock Dushko out. Though I feel like he's the superior fighter overall, I don't see Dushko having success on the ground with Chidi Enjo Kawani. Enjo Kawani's experienced as hell, but his stand-up is definitely going to be his main staple. He definitely has a bit of pop in the hands, but he's a really precise puncher. Not just explosive knockout artist type puncher. More precision technicality. And I think with Dushko's style, leaving the head a little bit on the center line, hittable for sure. I feel like Chidi's going to expose that here. Enjo Kawani by knockout, plus 125. I am huge on Enjo Kawani as far as confidence. I really expect him to win. He is a prospect. Honestly, he's a contender at this point, but you know, not towards the top end of the weight class. He's a veteran of the game. I feel like he's going to beat Dushko. High confidence pick. Very high confidence pick. Under two and a half rounds, minus 150, I think is a solid play. If you go under one and a half, plus 130, I think it's riskier territory. It could happen, but it definitely could go the over. I think that's a coin flip with the over one and a half at minus 145 or the under one and a half at plus 130. I think cheaty money line, cheaty, cheaty parlay piece, or cheaty by knockout, which gives you plus 125. But definitely if you like the unders, under 2.5 rounds, if you can play it, minus 150 is a tag that I really like here. And Kawani lock number two lock number three I am gonna have it as Jelton Almeida Jelton Jr. the odds aren't great for it but it really should happen minus 571 Parker Porter plus 472 it's not great value here it's more of like a add to the you know big parlay type lottery ticket play piece definitely not a money line over a round and a half brings you to plus 130. Under two and a half, minus 250. I do think it's under two and a half. Under one and a half, I feel like first or second round by Jail Tone Almeida, but it definitely might go over that round and a half. It's not impossible, plus 130, but I don't love the possibility of it because there's a chance that Parker Porter gets demolished in a round here. Almeida is the far superior fighter. Parker Porter is just a very big individual, and he does have a good amount of experience. Fight ends inside distance, minus 300. Let's see, Junior, minus 195, wins inside distance. I do think he gets it done inside distance. I don't love that play, though. If you got to pick knockout or submission, submission is plus 115 best value. Knockout is plus 350. 
I don't think it's impossible for Jelton to get the mount, ground and pound finish, Parker Porter, but I have a feeling he might lock up that choke as well, and Parker may uh, end up giving his back up. Tricky to pick as far as props here. Submission is more likely. Value-wise, it's better on Almeida by KOTKO at plus 350 if you're just looking for a sprinkle. Inside distance is there, but it's not a good line. Minus 195. Almeida's a money line is not really playable. Unless you're throwing Drake money at it, which I don't expect most of you to, he should get it done. And I feel like definite parlay piece, potential prop play on a submission or a knockout, I think would make sense. Or if you want to hit that inside distance hard at minus 195, it high likelihood that he gets it done that way. High likelihood. So it's not awful. It's just minus 195. Jilton Almeida. Lock number three. Let's get to the next lock of the night. It is going to be Joan Young Park over Eric Anders. I know Eric Anders has said he's betting on himself, $1,000. Doesn't seem super confident to only throw 1000 on himself. I think if he was supreme, he would be throwing five grand at plus 180 because that's good plus money. Joan Young Park, I think, is the vastly technical superior fighter, but Eric Anders is a hell of an athlete, and he's not easy to finish. Last one, he was submitted, but... Losing by sub to Andre Muniz, Jacare got tapped by him. Not a bad loss. I feel like the problem is John Young Park can do it all better technically. Eric Anders, I think, needs to land a big bomb, which is not easy for him to do for the most part. Tends to win his bouts by decision. Going long, I think Park is going to be prepared for his game. It's not going to be easy to out-wrestle Anders. I think he can beat him technically in the striking. I think he can avoid Anders' takedowns, maybe mix in a couple, but I see Anders bouncing back up to the feet. I think we're going the full three. Uh, maybe you're touching minus 195, John Young Park, plus 180, Eric Anders, but Park is the, the confident play. Over two and a half rounds at minus 200. They're big, strong middleweights. But they're guys that can go long. Minus 200 at over two and a half. I think that one comes through here. Park to win by decision is at plus 130. I do think that's the most likely method of victory here. I like over two and a half. I like John Young Park. I don't hate playing uh, the decision prop, but the value just isn't great. So if you're really feeling good about it, throw something at it. But it's not impossible for Park to let the hands fly and end up knocking Eric Anders out. It's unlikely, but it's always possible. I think we're going long. Over 2.5, minus 200, minus 195, money line, Joe Young Park. I think that's the play. That is lock of the week that I'm definitely liking. That's lock four. Now, the next lock, I guess it's going to be more so considered my least confident of the locks. I'm going to put it as Jonathan Martinez, minus 214, Vince Morales, plus 195. I really feel like Martinez should win this fight. Aside from getting caught by something, he really should be able to outmatch Morales technically in the stand-up by a good margin. I don't see Martinez getting out-wrestled and controlled. If he is taken down, I see him getting back up to his feet. I'm going to say Jonathan Martinez, confident pick. Over 2.5, minus 235, but it's not impossible there's a finish here, especially with both guys being willing to exchange at times. I don't really love playing the the over 2.5. I like the Jonathan Martinez side. I don't love it, the Jonathan Martinez side, but it's not a bad play. Martinez by decision, plus 115, the official pick. Let's see what Martinez by KO is, plus 440. Saying lower likelihood of him getting a knockout. We're probably going distance, so it's over 2.5, minus 235. Fight goes distance, minus 190. I like Jonathan Martinez straight money line around minus 214 range as the final lock for this UFC card. We're going to jump to the dog section. Make sure you guys smash the likes if you haven't. And let's talk some underdogs. Underdog number one is going to be our first fight of the night. Sam Hughes, plus 142 against Elise Reed. Sam Hughes has a chance to win this fight, and I think it's a high chance. She's an official pick from me. I think the pressure could be a difference maker here. Reed, not a huge puncher, and doesn't really have a lot of power behind many of her strikes. I think Hughes is going to walk through the storm. Estella Nunes, to me, is definitely the harder striker than Reed, and Hughes was able to walk through that fire. Can't she land takedowns? I expect her to, at the least, get some cage control time, mixing in a bit of takedowns, competitive stand-up match. I'm thinking close split decision, but it's going the Sam Hughes way. Now, as far as potential plays, you got plus 142 for the money line. 
I think we're going distance, minus 300 for over two and a half. Definitely something to consider adding to your parlays. Hughes by decision, plus 240. If you want to touch Hughes, I like towards the side of Sam Hughes' money line, but plus 240, Sam Hughes by decision is a likely outcome that over two and a half, minus 300, extremely confident. I see her beating Elise Reed here in a very competitive fight, though. Actually, let's see. Is there any is there any split odds that we can get? I don't know if they have them here. If you, if you could play it, fight to go split decision wouldn't be an awful bet either. But Sam Hughes, the dog pick, and I see her getting it done. The next dog of the night, Alan Imadovsky over Joseph Holmes. Now, matching these two up, we have to note Holmes is longer and taller by a good margin. Technically speaking, he's not a super impressive fighter at this point. He's raw and he's developing. Imadovsky hasn't looked great throughout his UFC career, but he's definitely a dynamite puncher. He can fight on the floor. If he can get inside of Joseph Holmes' range, I think he can land some big punches and maybe even knock Joseph Holmes out here. Over a round and a half, minus 140, minus 129 best value. I think that's a good play potentially there. I feel like we're going to see this fight at least play into the second or third. I kind of like the over one and a half. I feel like Amadovsky could get the finish, but even if he loses this fight, I think his toughness will keep it in. I know we're going to say, oh, he got knocked out in 14 seconds by John Phillips. It happens. Those type of quick losses, it is what it is. I don't think Joseph Holmes is going to deliver that type of knockout on Amadovsky. I think at the very least, he gets over that round and a half. I'm picking him to win the fight. Amadovsky, I don't really love playing the props here because I think he could win a decision or a knockout. By KO, plus 400. By decision, plus 700. The official pick is going to be by KO, so that plus 400 money is there. If you want to attack it as a sprinkle prop, maybe you're playing the money line and you want to add a little excitement to it by a very light play of the plus 400 prop on Amadovsky by KO. You want to add a little more to it over a round and a half. I don't think it's a bad idea either. I think we're probably going over a round and a half. Fight starts round two is not a bad play either at minus 195 because I really think we're going to get through the first round in this matchup. The pick, Amadovsky, dog attack. Uh, definitely some potential on that one. Now, this next dog is not an official pick, but it's a fight that I would consider near coin flip. I'm, a rich, I'm officially picking Omar Morales, but Euros Medik plus 130 is a dangerous finisher and is not a bad guy to put your money on, especially if you're looking to play something like under two and a half here, minus 160. I think that's a fantastic play. This fight ends inside of the distance. That's minus 188 best value, around minus 200. I think this fight's ending inside of the distance near certainty. Like, I'd be surprised to see it go long with Medik's pressure, the way he fights. I think it's either Morales' first finish, or I think Medik is going to get the finish here. Medik to win by KOTKO. The line is plus 275. The opposite side of Morales, plus 240. That under 2.5, though, at minus 160, I think that's a juicy play, and I feel like it's going to come through. I personally will be on that line, and that's really what I like the most here. Overall, there's some dogs, like, there's, you know, possibilities towards the top but i'm not officially including them i'm picking michelle pajero over santiago ponzinibbio but i know people will like that ponzinibbio line at that plus money you look towards the women's fight viana ricci i think that the ricci side gets it done but viana plus money people are going to attack it now another underdog that's been talked about i've seen people talking about it uh maybe chase hooper plus 160 range Let's jump into the prop section because I do want to talk about some potential props to add and they'll include some of these other fights that we didn't mention here. Now, Chase Hooper, Philippe Kalaris. I know plus 160 for Chase Hooper is there. Kalaris definitely can make it a fight and I see him probably edging out the decision. But Chase Hooper is a developing prospect and he's a submission ace. It's not a bad idea to touch Chase Hooper plus 465 by submission. Hooper to win a decision also plus 400. Both of those lines, I like Hooper by submission more plus 465. Hooper, the money line plus 160. If you don't want to play the game with much, you want to go light, a very mild dog attack. Maybe Chase Hooper is the one for you. Kolaris is a guy that definitely can be beaten, though I think that Chase is going to struggle. I'm just not impressed at all all with Chase Hooper's stand-up game. He needs so much work there. And even if it's better by a good amount from the last fight, I don't necessarily think it's going to be drastically improved and enough to be a huge difference maker. Now, Kolaris more that Muay Thai style striker. If he had a more boxing heavy attack, I think Chase Hooper would be in a lot more trouble here. So Chase Hooper might not be a bad guy to consider if you're looking at dogs or if you want to touch that uh, potential submission prop line. Now, the Ponzinibbio, uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio and Michelle Pereira fight, 
Over two and a half. It's scary because both guys bring dynamite. Minus 170. Pereira is known for going long. Ponzinibbio normally pretty damn durable, as is Pajera. Minus 170, over two and a half rounds. I feel like this fight's going all three, guys. I think over two and a half is the play on this one at minus 170. And the value is good. And the reason it's a little lower is because you got guys that have dynamite and they bring the fight on the feet. I still think that side of Pajera is going to get the hand raised. But at minus 170, over two and a half rounds... I think that's a solid play to uh, consider if you guys are looking for over-unders. Now, the next over that I like, it's going to be the Viana and Richie fight. I think the over two and a half here is also a pretty decent play. Over two and a half, minus 160 for Viana Richie. I feel like we're going over in this fight as well. I don't see Viana tapping Richie. I think it's going to be hard for Richie to tap Viana. Odds of Viana getting the KO, I'm going to say are on the lower side. Richie's shown some durability. I know she was beat up bad by Manon Furrat, but that's upper weight class, and it's Manon Furrat, who's a monster at this point on the rise. I like over two and a half a ton here, Viana Richie, minus 160. Some potential props for you guys to look at. Let's get into the parlays. That's where things get exciting. So make sure to smash that like button if you haven't yet. And let's talk about some potential parlays. Parlay number one, I'm going to call my favorite parlay. Plus 102 we see here, about plus 100 for a home with Chidi and Jakawani. I really think both these fighters win, and it gives you plus money. So personally, I'd attack it with a little something. I like that line. You want to add a little more to it. You could touch with that Viani, and, or excuse me, Viana and Ricci over if you have it available. Minus 175. You add that in, it brings you to around plus 218. I think that's a pretty solid parlay piece. If I want to keep running with overs and you're like, listen, g- give me the over money. I want to play it. Over two and a half for this Reed and Hughes fight. Plus 309. That might even be a better play if you don't want to touch the Viana, Viani and uh, Ricci one. Plus 160 for that. But let's include both for now as we try to develop a nice hail Mary attack here. The next one would be adding in Jong Young Park to beat Eric Anders, betting against Eric Anders here. He, he's throwing down money on himself, but only a thousand. Uh, so he, I'm not saying he's not confident, but five grand w- would be supreme confidence to me. Plus 508, plus 500 money essentially, pretty good value there. If we really want to go nuts at this point now, we've gone wide enough that we can add Jelton Almeida in. He's an extremely confident pick for most. And at plus 614 now, it gives you an extra plus 100. If you want a Hail Mary, I think this is a good one. Holly Holm, Chidi and Jaquani, over two and a half for the Hughes and Reed fight. Over two and a half for the Viana and Ricci fight. John Young Park and Jailton Almeida, plus 614. I think this is a parlay that does cash. Don't hit it too heavy, but you definitely can touch that line um, and look to cash a little bit of something. Now, I am going to clear things out and come up with uh, a couple more parlays for you. And I'll, I'll add a dog in there as well to add a little juice to the sales. Now, this next one, Holly Holm playing her with the side of Sam Hughes, plus 229. If you don't like home at the top, I do think Njikwani is a good play with it, plus 239. But actually, adding both in, plus 375. Now, you're going to find out early in the night if Hughes comes through. So worst case, you got to cover your ass if she takes that L. Don't go too crazy on it, but I do think she's going to win. It's a chance of a spotty decision though. So I definitely understand why people would be like, no, there's no way I'm touching the Sam Hughes side. Leave me all off of her. I don't want it. Understandable. Now, home lock it in. I feel like she's a lock in for most. Enja Kawani, lock it in for most of the parlays. That's really what I'm feeling. Those are my staple two here. If you want to add some more to the sales, and this is going to be special edition. I didn't even include it in the title. Junior Dos Santos has to beat Jorgen De Castro. The career is probably over. De Castro was outstruck by Greg Hardy. Let's note that. Junior still got more than that. Home with Dos Santos and Enja Kawani, plus 164. If you're looking to crossplay something, that's a little secret crossplay for the people that stay at the end for the parlays that you want to catch everything. That's one that I think you could do if you have the availability of of betting Eagle FC. Now add in one more to it. Adding in like Jelton would bring you into that plus 200 range, plus 209. I think this is a good cross play. Dos Santos, home, Chidi Enja Kawani, and then Jelton Almeida. If you want to go the over two and a half to add even more juice to the sales, plus 298, nearly plus 300, depending where you go. If you like that Ricci side as well, I'll add both because I'm liking the these overs a lot. Plus 525, If you don't want to play JDS, you actually just want to go over under city because you know what? It's not a terrible idea to do sometimes. 
we'll over two and a half there, and then we'll add in another over with uh, Ponzinibbio and Pajeda. It brings you to plus 214 with just all overs here. And if you add in Holly Holm at the top, plus 340. You add in Chidi and Jakawani straight, plus 354. Adding in both, plus 536. If you want to over attack and then add in Chidi and Holm, plus 536. I think that one comes through. Uh, it's a fun one to potentially play. Playing those overs will get you sweating during the fights, especially, I think, in this Pajera and Ponzinibbio fight. Overall, some solid bets to make this weekend. Be cautious with your bets. Be smart. Manage that money. But there's definitely money to be made. Really looking forward to this card. I will be live for the entire thing. So make sure you keep it locked in here at MMA Experts. If you guys haven't, make sure to smash the hell out of the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and share the video as well. Much love, my people. I hope you enjoyed another episode of this week's best MMA bets. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace, guys.